So this is our segmentation and clustering cheat sheet, the cheat sheet that I just designed for this course. And what we're going to be doing is uh, talking a little bit about it. So if you see this cheat sheet, it's kind of, it's organized into two pages. The first page, what it does is it goes over the summary information about um, segmentation and clustering. So often what the goal is, is to be able to understand um, customer segments, which customers are related to each other or which companies are related to each other. So this kind of concept comes up very frequently and it's called uh, clustering or segmentation. Uh, and it's basically trying to figure out which um, groups of people uh, uh, often act the same. So common business application, it can be used for finding segments within customers, within companies, and, and so on. And in this course, you'll actually do both. You'll um, see customers, and then um, and that'll be uh, what we learn on. And then we'll actually do it for companies, uh, which is uh, using their stock prices, uh, which is in a, in a nice challenge that's coming up. Um, the key concept here, uh, we do want to, um, there's a data transformation process that we'll be going through um, and we have to make it into a matrix that enables seeing the trends uh, that can be carried, compared across um, user units of measure that are standardized. So we call this a user item matrix, but basically we have to make it uh, the data into a matrix that lends itself well to this type of analysis. And I'll talk about more on that later. Um, some of the gotchas, uh, one that you'll run into quite frequently is if you have your data um, and you're trying to compare, you know, customers to each other, uh, if you're going off of, say, sales data, so how much pr product are they buying? Well, oftentimes that can be a very skewed measurement because some customers will buy a lot more. So they may buy, you know, monthly on average $10,000 of product whereas another customer might only do $100 a product. And what we need to do is we need to um, somehow standardize that. So how we usually do that is through a process of kind of grouping by those customers. And, and instead of doing um, a, a total, uh, usually doing like a proportion. So converting it to instead of total sales numbers for that month, what, what proportion of sales went to product X, product Y, and so on. How many clusters, how many components? Um, that is one of the uh, key challenges with doing this. So this is what's called an unsupervised learning problem. And when we're trying to group and, and cluster um, data, uh, meaning customers, we need to figure out, we don't, we don't know how many clusters are in there, so we need to test a bunch of different clusters. And we'll use what's called a scree plot to be able to detect those. Um, there's some popular methods that are out there. So for clustering and segmenting, um, there's two different ways, and we'll actually combine two of these. Uh, there's clustering, which um, we'll be going over the k-means, which in, um, in my opinion is one of the better ones. There's also hierarchical clustering, and then there's several kind of diff other types of clustering too. But these are kind of like the two main groups or the two most popular methods. Uh, what these do is they use um, a distance measurement, usually Euclidean distance, but it might be something else. And that what that does is it measures the similarity. Think of it like a, co a correlation, so to speak. Um, basically looking for which customers are, are similar or correlated to each other. Um, one of the, the gotchas that we already talked about is that data needs to be standardized or, or normalized. Uh, there's also dimensionality reduction techniques. So you've got things like PCA, uh, UMAP, which is a newer technique. And then there's uh, one called TSNE or TSNE. Um, but basically what these do is these take very wide data sets and you can actually um, uh, think of it as doing like a data transformation to make these um, what they call components of that data. Uh, meaning, for example, um, when you take a data set that's very wide and then you kind of convert it, transform it to have the first vectors within that data set or the first columns within that data set contain the bulk of the vari variance, um, then what that does is it allows you to basically hone in on those first vectors. So that's why we're able to take a wide data set and make it very small uh, without losing a whole lot of um, uh, a, a whole lot of information. And this becomes particularly important for clustering because what you can do is you can take that wide data set and then just look at the first two components of it 
and um, that'll capture most of the variability in your data. So you can use that as a, um, a visualization technique, plotting one component on the X, one component on the Y, and being able to actually identify clusters. We'll be using the UMAP. Um, the reason I like UMAP, PCA um, is a linear algorithm, and uh, UMAP is able to work with nonlinear data much better, which comes up much more frequently. Um, and then TSNE and UMAP are pretty much probably on the same level in terms of performance wise, but in terms of speed, UMAP is a much, is a much faster algorithm. So that's why we'll use that one. Um, so we'll be using K-means and UMAP. Um, there's some code here. So whether or not you're coming from the R, so for the, for the R track, you're coming from this one. If you're coming from the Python track, um, this is the code to, uh, to that will that you'll be using for K-means and UMAP, um, in each, each, um, uh, language. Okay, moving on to the second sheet. So this is a cool sheet because this really walks you through the step-by-step -step process. So, and you'll see this through the course. What we're going to do first is we're going to collect some data. Um, so this might be sales data, or here we have stock price data. Um, the first step then is going to be to standardize or normalize it. So we're converting um, this price column to a, a percentage returns column. And then um, you need to convert it to this thing called a user item format, which just takes that that proportion and spreads it out um, using a uh, um, one of the columns. So the end that you want to have is you want to have kind of your users in the left hand column and then items or days or whatever you're looking at in, in the Y column or in, in the uh, that, that goes width wise. And then in the values here is this proportion. So what's nice is you're able to compare. Um, so for this particular day, this is Agilent um, Technologies. They had a, uh, a percentage return of 0 0.254. Uh, from the previous day, so they their their stock went up two and a half percent. This one AAL went down one point two percent. So you're able to compare these two stocks together, and that's what what gives you this matrix that can then be plugged into K-means and get, can be plugged into UMAP. So once you get through this data preparation process, then you're working with K-means. So K-means, what the goal is is to to develop the scree plot where you have the number of centers and this thing called total within sum of squared error. And that allows you to identify a bend in the scree plot, which tells you that, okay, you're getting, you're reducing your error the most in this beginning section from here on out, adding more clusters isn't really helping that much. Um, so that allows you to decide, determine a number of centers or a number of clusters to use for K means. Um, and that takes care of the uh, unsupervised part of the, the problem. Then we do UMAP to develop a 2D projection using the, the first two components, uh, which will capture most of the variability in the data set. So it's basically taking your, your normal, your, your data, and then kind of converting it into a, um, a, a two dimensional structure. And then you'll see clusters in here pop out. And, um, and then once you get those, that projection, then you, you can combine the two. Um, so for this one, you know, you pick 10 clusters, then this is what, what you'll get. Something that looks like this, where you've got different um, uh, K-means clusters shown here, and you've got the uh, the UMAP 2D projection, and you can kind of see and explore. And um, what we're showing here is adding interactivity, so that's why this box pops up when you hover over it. So it really enables you to explore these. So that's, that's what this cheat sheet gives you. Um, it's a really great cheat sheet. We developed specifically for this course and we want it, to, we want you to have a path forward as we walk through this, um, the, this program. All right. Good luck. Uh, this is ex exciting stuff. This is, uh, entering the world of modeling, which is my favorite part of data science.